Welcome back to Web API Tutorials. I am Venkat. This is part 2 the evolution of Web API. So, before we are discussing about the evolution of Web API, we need to discuss we need to discuss about the evolution of web services. For that, so suppose as you all know how web applications will work. So basically, for web applications, there is a web server. Okay, so this is a web server and there are clients client emissions with the browser so browser is a web client so any browser chrome or firefox or safari any browser ie so like this from the browser we can request to the web server then web server will process our request then response back that's how web servers will work so if we want to establish communication between two different web servers like this is one web server and if we take another web server so web server 2 so if you want to communicate from one web server to another web server if these two web servers are running different applications meaning different applications hosted on different platforms like this one is running in a dotnet and suppose this one is running in a java so so this is a difficult situation because dotnet will not know java objects java java will not know the dotnet objects so this is the situation where web services came into the picture okay let's see that this is one web service web server sorry web server one running a dotnet application and this is a another web server web server two running a java application as you guys already know the c sharp language in .NET we use um, c sharp classes to represent the data c sharp classes to represent the data also data sets data sets data tables and data readers we use all these objects to represent the data so if we want to transfer this data to another platform like a java platform java does not know what is a c sharp class what is a data set or data table or data reader so java will have its own uh, data representation objects right so this in this situation if we want to communicate between two different uh, web applications hosted in different platforms so there was a problem so to resolve that problem so introduced like a web services so web services how this web services concept resolved this issue so this web services concept came up with a common data representational pattern so because c sharp objects is not known to the java objects and java objects are non, not known to the dotnet objects this is same for all other technologies if you want to take a python python uh, data representation will not known to the dotnet on java right so every technology has its own data representation pattern okay to resolve this thing so web services came up with a common data representation pattern called xml so this xml pattern is known by all the platforms or technologies dotnet knows xml java knows xml python knows xml even javascript also knows xml formats okay so with this introduction of this xml web services meaning soap based web services so they have established the communication between two different platforms two different applications running in two different platforms so how it works let's see how it works suppose this is a dotnet application so this is a dotnet application and this is a java application okay so when dotnet application wants to communicate with the java application so there is a web service build that web service provides a wsdl wsdl file using this wsdl file there is a proxy generated okay what this proxy will does is so whatever the dotnet object 
meaning a data set or a data reader whatever the dotnet object you want to transfer to the java application so you will you will convert or serialize that dotnet object to the xml so to the xml using the instructions given in the proxy or wsdl file okay wsdl file will have the instructions how you will convert your dotnet object to xml and how you communicate to the other platform application okay once we converted or serialize the data dotnet data to xml so then we will pass it to the java application again java application also will have a wsdl or proxy so this proxy will deserialize this xml into the java object and java knows the java objects that's how the communication established with the help of web services okay this web services will communicate using a soap protocol that soap protocol will use xml data representation okay similarly if java wants to communicate to the dotnet application this will have a wsdl meaning instructions instructions to uh, our proxy so instructions to convert to the xml it will convert to the xml then xml is again converted back to the dotnet object using a wsdl or proxy so this is how the web services got introduced into the technology market okay so this is how people have established the communication between two different platforms like java.net or .net python like that so after this after this after the web services so microsoft has introduced so this web services are uh, using mostly for http calls http calls so microsoft wanted to uh, provide another set of technology where they wanted to support more protocols more data representational patterns so that one is a wcf so the wcf will support uh, many wcf supports more than one protocols more than one data representation patterns like soap and rest also so so this one wcf is supporting soap and also rest and also it supports multiple data representation patterns and it also supports multiple protocols so this one is good when wcf is supporting so many things why do we need to move to the web api so why do we need to move to the web api so basically wcf supports hell lot of things so if you want to use one thing out of all these you have to do lot of configuration so which protocol you are using you have to configure which representation you are using you have to configure which protocol you are using you have to configure so there are lot of data contracting things also you need to mention while you are writing wcf programming so like this there are so many configurations you need to do for a simple crud operation over http protocol so that's the point where it triggered to introduce another set of technology like a web api okay so this web api supports only http and so it will by default supports a uh, crud operation templates crud operation template meaning if you have created one controller or one endpoint that endpoint supports all four kinds of operations like a uh, creation retrieval and um, updation and deletion so this one is very good if you want to develop a services which is only consumed over the http protocol and having simple kind of crud operations okay so 
this one as web api is directly created for http protocol you don't need to configure anything you can just create a project and directly use it that simple it is but coming to the web wcf if you want to use wcf for the same kind of http protocol and simple CRUD operations you need to configure a lot of things that's a headache for developers okay so that's where so if you are having a requirement of creating for http protocol you can go for web api if you want to create services for all kinds like our duplex communications or soap and rest or for multiple protocols or message queues something like this if you want to create services for multiple protocols and multiple audience you can go for wcf okay these days most of the services are written for http that's why people are opting for web api okay this is the evolution of web api over the time from web services wcf and web api for more videos like this please like share and subscribe thank you